Hi guys and welcome back to Level Up Rugby. Today I'm going to be taking you through the Level Up Rugby game breakdown. So the Level Up Rugby game breakdown looks something like this. It's a pyramid, as you can see, a nice triangle shape. And with any pyramid, you have to start at the foundations, the very bottom of the pyramid. And for any game, that starts with functional ability. The term functional ability relates to any kind of movement. If you can't move, then you can't play the game. So that's why you have to take care of your function ability first. It can consist of speed, agility, quickness, strength, power, explosiveness, all those words you typically find in the gym have to be taken care of first before you can begin to play any game. That's what the foundation of the Level Up Rugby game breakdown is built upon. Once you've taken care of your functional ability, your ability to move, to run, to sprint, to change direction, to be explosive, to push, to pull, all those different kinds of movements, including your physical fitness, aerobic capacity, etc., then you can begin to move on to your technical ability. Now, this relates to any skills involved in your game. For example, in rugby, that relates to your catch, pass, kick, high ball, footwork ability, that technical side of it in terms of what step you're using when, line out lifting, scrummaging, rucking, tackling. All of those things are skills and it's your technical ability. And now that technical ability is what holds together everything on top of it. Like we say, we're working through the pyramid, working our way up. Without the functional ability, you can't move. But once you've worked on that and have some degree of ability to move, depending on the level that you're playing at, the functional ability can take a little bit of a backseat if you're working at a lower level where your technical ability might be prioritized. But once you've got that functional ability to move in whatever way your level of competition requires, then it's time to focus on your technical ability, which holds together everything on top of it, which is next, your tactical ability. Whatever game you're playing, your tactical ability takes place inside of one phase and is what you do because of what you know. It involves a little bit of analysis on the run in the moment rather than preliminarily. So for example, in rugby, your tactical ability in the micro sense would be executing 2v1s, 3v2s, 4v3s, etc, etc. And the macro tactical ability would be your strike moves. So your unders and overs, your playoff 12, dummy switch, pop, shoulder ball, all these different moves, that's your macro tactical ability. So going back down the pyramid, there's no point having tactics if you can't physically move. You've got to cross that box first before you move on to the next step. So now you can move relative to the level of competition you're playing the game at. You can then begin to focus on your technical ability. Again, there's no point having a tactical understanding or ability without being able to catch past the ball. There's no point having strike moves or being able to understand how to operate a two on one or a three V two if you can't move or catch pass. You have to have those foundational levels first before you then work on to your tactical ability. So now you've got those two levels, you can focus on your tactical ability, you can understand how to execute 2v1s in the micro sense of tactics, and you can understand how to generate those 2v1s in the macro sense of tactics with your strike moves, with your playoff 12, your unders and overs, etc., etc. Your macro tactics are about generating micro tactical opportunities, to use the language specifically. So you're going to create a 2v1 through the use of a dummy switch pop, through the use of a playoff 12. So for example, you'll have the macro tactic of a playoff 12, but involved in that is the decision making of the 2v1 of the two defenders in front of you. If I'm the 12, I'm either going to play short or I'm going to play out the back depending on the context in front of me, the micro tactic. So there's no point having a macro tactical understanding of this move we're running if I don't understand the micro tactics of how to engage the defender, who I'm engaging and why I'm engaging them. So yes, you need to have both the micro and the macro element of tactics. Once you've taken care of all of that, you can then move on to your strategical ability. Your strategical ability takes place over multiple phases rather than just within one phase. Your strategy is what you are as a team and how you want to play in a macro sense. And then the micro sense is how you deploy systems and shapes to appease that macro style of play. It's what you do in spite of what you know to generate tactical opportunities. So your micro strategy will be your attacking shape and your defensive system. Whatever your shape may be, it's designed to generate tactical opportunities. 
it's designed to create chances where you can deploy tactics such as a playoff 12 and unders and overs and then execute those macro tactics with micro tactical understanding and ability. So your strategical ability is designed to generate tactical opportunities to exploit. It's the shape you use in spite of what the defense may be doing to impose yourself on the defense. So in that sense, strategy is very proactive. It's what you do to impose yourself on the opposition. Whereas tactics are very reactive. It's what you're doing because of what you see going on in front of you. Your strategy generates opportunities for you then to respond to with your tactics. Hope that makes sense. Your macro strategy is the broad, endearing way that you want to play the game. In rugby, there's different ways of playing the game broadly. You can be an expansive team and try to move the ball like Japan, for example. Or you can be a very kick-based, defensive-oriented team like South Africa, say. Alternatively, you could be a very physical-dominated team like England who try to bully teams. Or, for example, you could be a very technical-based team like Australia who like to deploy strike moves, etc., etc., and really trying to manipulate the defence. Typically, that's what they're known for. Your macro strategy is your brand idea identity. In the Premiership, for example, Bristol will have a very flary attacking macro strategy and therefore cascading down their micro strategy will relate to that. So they'll have an attacking system which looks to be able to move the ball like that. They'll have more players spread across the field, for example, maybe with a 2-2-2-2 formation looking to play the ball around and attack different spaces. Harlequins have a very attacking style of rugby in their macro strategy. They're looking to move the ball around to manipulate defenders and play exciting rugby. That's their brand. Their micro strategy relates to that by giving themselves a formation that allows them to move the ball. They have a lot of one out forward runners so they can pull the ball out the back and really move the ball around the pitch without sliding too much and whilst they're still engaging defenders. So their shape, their micro strategy relates to their macro strategy. Their macro strategy is their style of play their micro strategy is how they go about doing that, which then creates tactical opportunities, which you then exploit with your strike moves and your 2v1 understanding and execution. So that's how it relates to rugby. You have your macro strategical understanding of the style of rugby you want to play, which then influences moving down the pyramid, your micro strategical ability, which is your attacking shape and your defensive system. Once you've decided on that, whether that's a outside press defense and inside press defense, a soft defense or a hard defense, or whether it's a 1-3-3-1 shape or a 2-4-2 shape or a 2-2-2-2 shape, whatever it may end up being, that will then influence your tactics. Your tactics are generated by your strategy to then exploit those opportunities that are created. So for example, you have your 1-3-3-1 shape, so you know that you'll be running an unders and overs with that lead forward, the tip runner and the 10 at the back. Then once you're through that shape, you need to understand how to execute a 2v1, a 3v2. So there again, you have a tactical situation in that one phase inside of your macro strategy that takes place over multiple phases. That's how both your macro and micro tactics relate to your strategy. You have your shape that you understand you're going to be moving around in, but within each individual phase, will take place those tactics that you need to understand to be able to exploit those opportunities. However, there is no point in having all of this strategical understanding, all this tactical understanding, without the ability to catch pass, without the ability to kick, without the ability to tackle, without any skills. You have to have the skills first to then tie everything else together. But before that, you have to have the ability to move. It goes without saying somewhat, and it's relative to your level of competition, as we mentioned, but you have to have speed, you have to have strength, power, quickness, fitness, all those different things that allow you to move, then are built into your technical ability, which allows all the tactics, all the strategy to be tied together. You have to look after those technical things first before you then even start to consider your tactical understanding and your strategical understanding. So that's how the pyramid works. You have to start at the bottom and then work your way up very slowly, making sure that you continue to develop your functional ability, making sure that you're staying on top of your technical ability so that then the team as a whole can tactically operate and strategically start to impose themselves on their opposition.